Greetings, brave adventurers. This is Metal Cat Studio, and we have received tons of feedback and reviews lately, and I know everyone is looking forward to what comes next in Grimlord and what you can expect from us in the coming weeks and months. We're planning on doing these dev diary style videos probably at least once a month or so, just to try and reach out to the fans a little bit more so that we can show some transparency and build some trust with you guys. We're always getting questions about the game, both on social media and on our Discord, which you can join in the links down below, by the way. And we'll be using this to just sort of answer questions and concerns, you know, showcase what we've worked on and what we're planning for the future of Grimlord so that you guys aren't just left wondering, you know, when's the next wave of content? When is the next update? That sort of thing. If you want to stay up to date with us, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any future dev diaries that we release. And with all that malarkey out of the way, let's get started. First of all, the most asked question of our community. What new content will we experience soon? The next thing we're working towards content wise within game is implementing a complete overhaul of improved sound effects, sound design, and our audio engineering. We know that it's suffered for a really long time, but rest assured we're working on it. More than 150 new sound effects are being tested and implemented as we speak. We have collaborated with a top tier sound design team that has worked with AAA franchises like Diablo to create, record, and edit an abundance of new Quithby sound effects for the game from beginning to end. This will ensure that every weapon, every piece of armor, every spell slung provides acoustically accurate and immersive sound effects. This will deeply improve the overall quality of the game as well as the sense of immersion that the player will feel once they put that headset on. The next thing we're working on is making new bosses, new enemies, and new NPCs for the two remaining chapters in the game, chapters two and three. Goblins and mutated abominations, various types of enemies with different attack patterns are our main enemies in the chapters to come. We'll be introducing the new goblin hero, multi-legged monsters, and of course the little goblin minions, and we've used motion capture to make more vivid and realistic expressions on the incoming Gabo's faces. After that, it's all about the new chapters, the new maps, and the new levels. There will be a more compact story-driven gameplay element in chapters two and three with a large amount of text and lore elements introduced. We hope to complete both of these at the same time and release them together instead of slow rolling them and, and showing individual sections and then making players wait for several more months to experience a new wave of content. We just wanted to kind of bundle it all together, release it all at once so players know what to expect. There will be story continuation from the first chapter that leads all the way through the second and third chapters, so we plan to launch those by the end of the year, ideally. Ideally. <laughs> of course, if there are any delays or changing on time frame, you'll be able to learn about it in any future videos we make here. Next is a total engine overhaul. Currently, Grimlord runs on Unreal Engine 4, which is an incredible engine, do not get me wrong, but Unreal 5 is just better in pretty much every way. It's both technically and aesthetically more advanced than its predecessor, it's more intuitive, and it's just much easier to use. These are just some of the many benefits we get by leveling up our engine. Upgrading to UE5 at this time point is also better for mod support in the future. We originally wanted to release the modding tool in the UE4 version. In fact, it's actually already totally done, like it's ready to launch. But we solicited the opinions of the various Epic communities and its many developers. We just ultimately think the better move right now is to upgrade to UE5 and then launch the upgraded modding toolkit. So while this will provide a delay on the timing for mod support, in the end, it will result in an overall better product, not just for modders and every fan and lover of the game, but also from the development side as well. Some thoughts on the all-in-one devices porting real quick, guys. We allocated a portion of manpower to carry out this specific porting process. The purpose being to allow all players to experience Grimlord without any obstacles in terms of device or platform. 
That way, it doesn't matter if you have a quest, an index, a vibe. The game is equally accessible to everyone. We have made a lot of graphical optimization and compatibility adjustments to ensure that every player's experience of Grimlord is sort of unified across all platforms, and you can more or less expect the game to function just as intended on almost any headset, while still looking great and not having any signs of significant drop in quality. Adding to all of that, let's move to some of the in-game changes that we're working on. Speaking specifically about mechanics, you know, in-game functionality, that sort of thing. We totally reworked the skill tree in-game, which allows each player to have their own unique build, give themselves buffs and perks. If you want to be a big tanky dude with tons of health, you can buff your constitution and your health pool. If you want to do a bunch of damage with big weapons, you can you can do that. If you want to be a sniping critical hit archer, you can do that as well. And so that's really the the strength behind the skill tree in game is it really allows players to sort of customize the build to their own play style and, and just kind of play the game they want, but also be benefited or rewarded for playing the way that they want. So you can expect a lot of changes for that skill tree. We completely overhauled a bunch of the perks, reworked a bunch of stuff on there. So expect that to be coming in the next patch. Something we're really looking forward to adding is an arena game mode, basically an open arena with waves of mobs that spawn in and just attack you until you fall. We're going to use the arena to test each build from here on out. Not only that, we're also preparing to open the arena function to players so that everyone can choose the type, number, and characteristics of the enemies they want to face, while also allowing them to customize a full skill tree prior to play. This means players will be able to test and tweak new builds using the skill tree in-game in case they want to know how a certain build might play before actually applying it to their character in their save file. For others, it might just be a great way to blow off some steam real quick or just hone your skills in-game. Next is there's a big update that's drawing close, and we have the following two key improvements to make in it the parry system and combo blocks. Many feedback from players mentioned that the parrying of bosses and enemies lacked accuracy, and we also realized that once the player blocks a chain of consecutive attacks of the enemy, the entire combo will be interrupted. In order to make the combat experience smoother, we optimized and overhauled the combat system. Players need to block multiple times to resist the enemy's continuous attacks, and the enemy may even change their attack method and direction during the process, which results in a much more unique and dynamic fighting experience every time you pick up the sword. This will make the entire battle feel much more random and unpredictable as well as more challenging. So make sure you're keeping your wits about you. Regarding virtual desktop, this is a recurring issue that haunts us to no end. It has been going on since basically the demo version of the game launched over two years ago. We have improved the hand tracking speed of virtual desktop to provide a much more accurate and decisive feedback, but testers using different devices and with different hardware stats are getting completely different results, like they're all over the place. It needs further optimization and we're still just trying to take our time with it to make sure that we get it right rather than sort of rushing a temporary patch that doesn't really actually fix anything. But we're not stopping, we're still working on it, we're trying to find a stable solution for virtual desktop, please just remain patient with us. But that is sort of what we're trying to look forward to releasing in our next patch. And that's basically it everyone, pretty much everything that we have on our plate currently or within the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, we will be working on these continually, always trying to make Grimlord a better game. Please, if you guys have any suggestions or feedback, we're always open to it. We want to hear it. Leave some comments down below and let us know what you want to see in the game, what changes you want to see, if you have a bug or, or a glitch of some kind. Make sure to join the Discord. We do have a completely automated ticket system built into our Discord server specifically for lodging complaints, reporting bug fixes, stuff of that nature. Um, every message that you send will go straight to the dev team so that they can just immediately review it and basically 
start trying to find a solution immediately. Uh, thanks so much for your time, everyone. If you've made it this far, please remember, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be doing this monthly. Uh, look forward to seeing you all again. And remember, have fun dying.